I'm going to land and will never go. We will never grow. We will never grow. Going to land and will never. My name is Nathaniel King. The trustees were my relatives, the Kings, of this building years ago. I was raised here. And of course, I left and went away for about, I guess, 20 some years and came back. And I come back just in time in 95. So, 97, they closed the church down. And I can recall that. Uh, at the time, I was playing with a, a gospel group, and my uh, father's mother and my and his sister was at the hall over there selling food for the raise for the church, and they left me in here. And she told me, she said, "You're gonna have to take up funds for the church and blah blah blah, because we're over over here in the hall." And I I got thinking about that for a good while, and I said to myself, I said, "You know what? I said I'm the only one left in here, the king." And so it hit me that ah, I got to do this because I'm the only one left in here. So I, I got the funds together and took it to them later on that afternoon. And it wasn't too long after that, the place closed. A few years ago, we had little tents set up out there and had gatherings just outside the church here. So we had the mics and the, I brought my guitar out there a couple of times and we played and people got together. A lot of the younger people have moved away. And a lot of the older people have Past. I've seen a lot of people come and go through this aisle here and sit up there and been put back there in that field back there. Yeah, it's a lot of people back there. And of course, in this area, I'm one of the oldest as far as the Keens is concerned. Because we, we had the Keens, we had the, the Canes, and we had the McCoys up here, and we had the Lees down out here. And in the back to the right back there, there are Tubman relatives there. When I first come home, you could read what it said on the tombstones. We was trying to get somebody to read them. It couldn't get it done. Talking about slavery, my um, father's mother's father, John Linthicum, is buried back there, straight back to the left. And if you go back there to the left, you'll see it's just one grave back there. There's a head marker. He was a slave, and he went into the military to get his freedom. So realizing what he did, I said, ah, so that's how my father's mother got her freedom, was by him going into the service at the time. And the regiment he was in, it was quite a few people from this area, Dorchester area. What he did, once he got out, a lot of his friends, they went west, and they became part of the Buffalo soldiers. And I never heard what happened to him after that. But I did realize, I said, wow, it's because of him we got our freedom. I mean, my father's mother and my father and, of course, me, and that's how we got our freedom. But it wasn't that long ago. It, was, it wasn't that long ago. But, yeah, I used to go to the woods when I was a kid. Bicycle first, then on the mini bike. And I talked with Miss Nona, another member of the committee. She said her father used to bring wood back and forth through the woods. I mean, years ago, I mean, years, years ago, there was no electricity. There was no bathrooms. And yes, I can recall getting, cutting wood for the heat or the cook or something like that, or going out in the woods and getting the straw to put in the pen for the pigs, which we killed every year for meat. Years ago, it was just something to do and, and, and didn't have much, no. I can recall getting a little small block of wood so big, and another little small black of wood, get some soda tops, nail them on the sides for wheels, putting a nail here for a hook to hold a trailer, come myself having a little truck and trailer. Happy. We used to have games we used to play. We'd have a ball, we'd throw it over the house, they call it Annie Oakley. If you catch the ball, then you run around, you tag somebody. We used to have another game called uh, Midnight. You go up to the maybe the side of the church and you you count until you get up to twelve. And then you said midnight. Then you turn around whoever you can go catch. They would become the person that had to do that. And then we'd had another game. It was a girl game, but they called it hip scotch. You'd have all these marks on the ground, and you had a piece of stone or a shell, and you threw it, and you you do all that 
so you wouldn't get out to play the games. When I was a kid, we used to get a crab basket and nail it up on the tree. And then we'd shoot the ball into it. There was so much little small stuff to do that we were happy. I mean, we were just, we were happy. I mean, it was, to me, it was great. That's the big story right there. But yes, it's a lot of history in here. Going to land and 